Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. It has been a little while since I uploaded any videos. I have a chronic illness and I had to have some major surgery, so I took a little time to recover. Don't worry, it was all planned and I'm fine. I just needed a little extra time to rest. But I am back and ready to kick things off again with another Minecraft episode. This time, I thought we'd take a look at another very well-known site, the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. There's a lot to get through with this site, so let's get started. Also, stay tuned to the end of the episode to hear details about how you can get access to the schematics for my Minecraft builds through my Patreon page. But I'll talk about that at the end. Okay, let's get started on the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. This temple is built on relatively flat land that is nestled between several hills to the north and the Alfeos River to the south. It's hard to get the right terrain in Minecraft from most ancient sites, but I thought this area on the edge of the dark oak forest with the river alongside would do just fine. The Temple of Zeus at Olympia was a temple to, well, Zeus, who is the Greek god of thunder and the sky more generally. Zeus is also the king of the gods of Mount Olympus, which is the highest mountain in Greece. As a side note, Olympia and Mount Olympus are not the same place. Mount Olympus is in the eastern part of the country, while Olympia is on the western side of the Peloponnese Peninsula. Try saying that five times fast. But you can imagine a culture with gods located on Mount Olympus is going to have a certain number of Olympus-related names for towns and cities and other places and things. Olympia is also where the ancient Olympic Games were held, and it's where the Olympic torch begins its journey every time the games are held today. The Temple of Zeus at Olympia was built between 470 and 457 BC. Similar to the Temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza, it was part of a much larger complex of buildings, with over 70 temples in total, according to Pausanias, who is a writer from the 2nd century AD. This area is known as the Altist, which refers to the shady grove of oaks, pines, poplars, and olive trees. It was first formed in the 10th and 9th centuries BC, and now includes the Temple of Zeus, the original stadium for the Olympics, the Temple of Hera, who happens to be Zeus's wife and also his sister, the Great Altar of Zeus, and the Pelopian, which is the alleged tomb of Pelops, another figure in Greek mythology who was also the king of Pisa. We'll talk about him later because he ends up being on the Temple of Zeus as well. As for measurements, this temple is 29 meters wide. It's a great great number, 29 meters wide and 70 meters long, and it stands roughly 20 meters from the ground to the pediment. Now, these measurements were taken from Pausanias, who was writing in the 2nd century AD when the temple was still standing. And actually, if you look at some of the measured drawings, which I'll show you later in the video, they kind of match up, but they also kind of don't. So at times I use these measurements, and at times I use the measurements in the drawings where I have measured drawings that I can use. So it gets it gets complicated, everybody, but generally speaking, roughly 29 meters wide, roughly 70 meters long, and roughly 20 meters high. Well, from, from the ground to the pediment. What's a pediment, I hear you asking? A pediment is the triangular part of the roof that you see at the top of a lot of Greek temples, and you can see it in this reconstruction drawing here. That's the pediment. You can also see that there are six columns on the east and west sides of the temple from this plan drawing, and 13 columns on both the north and the south sides. Now, before we talk about orientation, I know that my temple here isn't oriented the right way for the cardinal directions. I was orienting it towards the woods and the river, and I didn't realize it was on the wrong axis until it was too late. So just ignore ignore the sun in the sky in, in Minecraft. It's all fine. Anyway. Since we're here talking about pediments, let's throw in a whole bunch more architectural terms. So if you ever wanted some words for Scrabble, I got gotcha. you. So the Temple of Zeus is peripteral in form, which means that it's a temple built with a portico or a porch that's created by the outer ring of columns. And this outer ring of columns is also called a colonnade or a teron. This temple to Zeus also had a frontal pronaos, which is the area between the Terran and the inner temple. The front porch, as I said, is called the pronaos, while the one at the back, which you can see doesn't have an entrance to the temple, is called the opistodomos. I don't know if I'm putting the emphasis in the right places on these words. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing them correctly. If not, I do apologize. And if you know how to pronounce them, let me know in the comments below. The central inner chamber is called the cella, 
which basically means the room at the center of the temple that usually contains an image or statue of a particular deity or a mythological entity. In our case, as you may have guessed, it's Zeus. The cella generally didn't have windows, and it's divided into two separate areas in larger temples like our Temple of Zeus. A central nave that is flanked by two different aisles. So you can see the columns divide it into the, the central nave and then the two aisles on either side. The cella also often contained a space or a table for votive offerings, and importantly, no sacrifices or gatherings took place inside the cella. There's actually a separate place for that within this complex, within the altis, called the Altar of Zeus or the Great Altar to Zeus, which is just outside a little ways. The temple itself was built out of local limestone, so actually the same material that the, the Temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza was built out of. They're not exactly the same kind of limestone because one is found on the Yucatan Peninsula and one is found in Greece, but they are both limestone. So the temple was built out of limestone, but it had been coated with stucco to make it look like marble so that the walls of the building could look similar to the statues and carvings that were all around the building. We don't have marble in vanilla Minecraft, so I've opted for quartz instead, especially because that means that we can use the quartz columns for the colonnade. Okay, so I started out by placing single blocks for the columns, but after taking a closer look at some images on Google and also some measured plan drawings, I realized that these columns were much wider, and in all honesty, they'd have to be to hold up a roof at that height. So I made them two meters in diameter, and I think that works pretty well for what I'm trying to do. That said, these columns are not the same width all the way up. They are in my Minecraft recreation once we get there, because that's, that's the only way to do it in Minecraft. But actually, when you look at the columns in the architecture and in drawings, they start at roughly two meters in diameter at the bottom, but then they taper up to a much smaller diameter at the top. So if we could do that in Minecraft, I would, but unfortunately, I can't. So we're at two meters the whole way up. Now that I've got the base of the site, there are actually two different directions that we can go with this. With the Temple of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza, the temple is still standing. So I could build what we knew of it in the past, and I could also build how it looked today, and they're basically the same thing, as far as we know. Unfortunately, that is not the case for the Temple of Zeus. The inner sanctuary of this temple was destroyed in 426 AD under orders from the Roman Emperor Theodosius II in an attempt to quell pagan beliefs in the region. The rest of the temple was likely destroyed by earthquakes in 522 and 551 AD, and you can see that the columns generally still lie where they fell. So option number one is to build the site as it looks today, or at least close enough to it, but we also have a lot of writings from when the temple was still active and still standing, and there's also been a lot of archaeological work done around the site. So we do have enough information where we can try to recreate the site as it might have looked in the 5th century BC. Or, again, at least as close as we can do that in Minecraft. In all honesty, why not do both? So let's start with the archaeological site, mostly because that's the one that I tackled first. I haven't been to this site and there isn't much published academically that shows the site as it is today. Usually in archaeology, the drawings and plans we make as part of archaeological work appear in site reports, which we call grey literature. The reports are generally archived with local governments, but they aren't widely published or necessarily available to the general public. Where I live in Scotland, we have ways of accessing certain grey literature for various sites, but I'm not aware of how to access it for international sites like the Temple of Zeus in Greece. So because I couldn't rely on site reports, I instead had two other big resources to rely on. Google Maps and any images uploaded to the internet by people who have visited the site. So, looking at the satellite imagery from Google Maps, we can see from the shadows across the site that not all elements were destroyed to the same degree. Some cast much longer shadows than others, like these columns here, this area of wall, or this column in the northwest corner. We can also see that the southern columns look as if they just kind of toppled over where they stood. And there is quite a lot of debris around the building, most likely from the roof and the walls. Google Maps has some excellent street view options for heritage sites, and taking a good look at some of those tells us that the column in the northwest corner is actually still standing, while everything else is largely collapsed, though, as I said, to varying degrees. 
After the site was destroyed in the 6th century AD, it eventually became covered in alluvial deposits, which are soil, clay, silt, or other materials that are deposited by running water, like the nearby river. And actually on this site, there were even certain areas that had alluvial deposits that were as many as 8 meters deep. Much of the Altus lay largely forgotten until it was re-identified by Richard Chandler, an English antiquarian, in 1766. In 1829, a French team of archaeologists identified and partially excavated the Temple of Zeus, and then systemic excavation of the area began in 1875 with a German team, and it has largely continued until the present, with some interruptions along the way. Now, the area is surrounded by oak, olive, pine, and poplar trees, but we only have oak trees in Minecraft. I did decide to put some acacia trees in as well because they could maybe pass for olive trees? Maybe? I'm going with it. And with a little bone meal, our archaeological site is complete! I didn't do every little piece of architectural debris on the ground, mostly because Minecraft doesn't quite have that option, and because there's no way to get them all in the same place or orientation or, you know, like, next to each other, but still definitely different things. But there is quite a lot of debris around, so if you wanted to build this in your own world, it would certainly look the part. Okay, so, moving on to the recreation. This was harder than I thought. <laughs> this took longer than I thought, and it was harder than I thought. So let's talk about it. We still have quite a bit of the archaeological footprint of this building, so we can at least see where open passageways or doorways were. Also, since this temple is built like many other Greek temples, some of which are still standing, we know the general shape of the roof and the pediment, and we know that there were carvings decorating the pediment and also just underneath it on either side. We also have writings from the creator of the statue of Zeus that sat in the intertemple, who was named Phidias. Phidias was also the artist who designed the statues of Athena housed in the Parthenon, and he was very, very well regarded by the Greeks in his time. The eastern pediment at the Temple of Zeus depicted the chariot race between Pelops and Enomaus arranged around the central figure of Zeus. Remember how I was talking about Pelops before and how his tomb is allegedly also at this site? Well, it makes sense that he appears on the Temple of Zeus as well. The western side of the pediment shows the battle between the Lapiths and the Centaurs, which is arranged around the central figure of Apollo instead of Zeus, and Apollo is pointing at the humans in the battle, apparently showing whose side he's on. This battle is also known as the Centauramachi, and both of these, the battle with the Centaurs and the chariot race with Pelops, were well-known tales in Greek society. Also, the winner of the chariot race, Pelops, and the winner of the battle with the centaurs, Perthos, who is the king of the Lapiths or the, the humans in that story, were both grandsons of Zeus, making their stories good candidates for adorning his temple. Above the inner columns marking the entrance to the Pronaus in the east and the Opastodomos in the west are a series of friezes, which is another word for just a highly sculptured part of a building. These friezes alternated between mythopies, which are rectangular decorative bands that depict elements of mythology, religion, or history, and triglyphs, which are carvings of three vertical columns used as separators between the mythopies. The mythopies at the Temple of Zeus depicted the twelve labors of Heracles, such as this one depicting the story of Heracles and the bull. Six labors of Heracles are found on the east side, and the other six are on the west. Heracles is the only mortal in Greek mythology to have been granted immortality, and he was often seen as the pinnacle of strength and athleticism, which makes sense as to why he would be on a temple to Zeus in the first place, because he's related to Zeus, but also a temple to Zeus at Olympia, where the Olympic Games began. The ancient Olympic Games were also designed to showcase athletes and warriors, which were often seen as very similar to each other in ancient Greece, and they're both subjects in these stories. There's also evidence that in Greek mythology, either the chariot race between Pelops and Enomaus, or the Twelve Labors of Heracles, are the mythological origin for the Olympic Games. Okay, moving on. The edge of the roof had 102 water spouts projecting from it in the shape of lion heads, of which we still have 39. I haven't put these on here because it's 
Lion heads are hard, and fitting 109 of them is going to be a lot, but they definitely were there. There is some variation in style on the water spouts as well, which indicates that the roof was repaired during the Roman period. The roof itself was made out of marble tiles that were cut so thin they were actually translucent, meaning they let light through. So as you can see, I've actually decided to use some white stained glass instead of any of the solid blocks in Minecraft, just so we can try to get that lighting effect through. When it came to the real Temple of Zeus, on a summer day, each tile on the roof would likely have allowed enough light through that it was similar to a 20 watt bulb today. So it was really bright in there, you guys. All of the recovered statues and carvings that we have from the Temple of Zeus are currently housed at the Archaeological Museum of Olympia, which actually is currently open to the public with social distancing, mandatory masking rules, and other safety measures in place. This video isn't sponsored by them, but if you happen to be in the area, I'm sure they would love the support. I've put the link to their website in the description down below, so have a look at them if you happen to be around. Now, as you may have noticed, I spent a whole lot of time talking about the sculpture for both the metopes and the pediments, and I don't have any sculpture in my recreation. And the reason for that is because at this scale, the sculpture would have to be so detailed that we can't really get that in Minecraft. There aren't blocks that we can do that for, unless I just put some buttons in. And I didn't really want to do that. I just kind of wanted it to, to look a bit more carved. So I decided to go with the chiseled quartz blocks and have those stand in for both the pediment statues and the metopes. Now, the other thing about the metopes is that at this scale in Minecraft, because we can't do anything by half block, really, certainly not vertically in vanilla Minecraft, I've had to make the metopes different sizes. But actually, in the Temple of Zeus, every metope is 1.6 meters square. So they're all the same size and they're all squares. The problem with Minecraft is just that I couldn't get that scale and have the triglyphs in the build. So it's the scale's a little off. But in the actual thing, it's 1.6 meters square per metope. And then they're all separated by a triglyph. Okay, so now we've got the pediments, we've got the roof, we've got the metopes or at least close enough to what I could do for them. So let's talk about the inside. And this is where, uh, as I said, this gets complicated. This is kind of where it breaks down a little bit. There doesn't seem to be any clear decoration inside the temple, aside from descriptions of the large statue of Zeus sculpted by Phidias, which is fine. I thought we can do the general architecture of the inside and then I'll build a... a, a statue to Zeus as best I can in Minecraft and it'll all be great. The statue stood 12.4 meters or 41 feet tall and it was a Chris Elephantine sculpture. There's another Scrabble word for you, by the way. So Chris Elephantine means that it was made out of plates of ivory and sheets of gold that were mounted on a wooden frame. So the statue was mostly made of wood, but the outside was covered in ivory and gold to give it the right coloring. This statue, by the way, done by Phidias, was also considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Based on descriptions of this statue, we know that it took up half the width of the isle, and Strabo, a Greek geographer from the first century BC, said that the statue looked as if Zeus would break through the roof of the building if he stood up from his throne. So this is a really, really big statue. Unfortunately, the statue was lost and later destroyed. So we don't actually have the statue anymore. And it's kind of unclear exactly how it was lost or destroyed. Local stories say that it was carried off to Constantinople in modern day Turkey, where it was destroyed in the Great Fire at the Palace of Lausus in 475 AD. On the other hand, the temple itself, like this temple, Temple of Zeus in Olympia, caught fire in 425 AD, and the statue may have been destroyed then. And if you're wondering why a fire would destroy this statue, remember, it's mostly made out of wood. The outside is ivory and gold, but ivory doesn't like fire either. Wood certainly doesn't, and gold is a pretty soft metal, so depending on the heat of the fire, well, not so great. There is also the possibility of an earlier theft of the statue, which is mentioned by Lucian of Samosta in the second century AD. He says, quote, they have laid hands on your person at Olympia, my lord high thunderer, and you had not the energy to wake the dogs or call in the neighbors. Surely they might have come to the rescue and caught the fellows before they had finished packing up the loot. So that sounds like a statue of Zeus was either destroyed or taken from 
this area. But remember that there's actually quite a lot dedicated to Zeus at the Altus, so it could have been a different statue or perhaps something else associated with him. However the statue was lost or destroyed, or both, we don't have many depictions of it today aside from some ancient coins from the region, like the drawing of this one here from Elis. We do have a description from Pausanias, though, who has that writer I was telling you about from the 2nd century AD. He says that the sculpture was crowned with a sculpted olive wreath and that Zeus wore a gilded robe made of glass and carved with animals and lilies. He held a chryselephantine statue, so ivory and gold on a wood frame, of Nike, the goddess of victory, in his right hand, and in his left he held a scepter inlaid with various metals and sporting an eagle at the top, as you can see in this recreation drawing. The throne depicted painted figures and images decorated with gold, precious gemstones, ebony, and ivory, and Zeus's sandaled feet rested on a footstool decorated with a depiction of one of the battles between the Greeks and the Amazons. There was also a way to walk underneath the throne, which was restricted by painted screens. Pausanias also mentions that the statue was continually bathed in olive oil because the ivory didn't take too well to the local climate, and if they let it dry out or be exposed to the air, it would crack and get damaged. Because they were bathing the statue in olive oil all the time, they also had to catch the oil when it fell off of the statue. So the floor in front of Zeus was paved with black tiles and surrounded by a rim of marble to catch the oil as it fell off the statue. Since the oil was reflective, a little bit like water, it turned this area into a reflection pool which made the statue appear even bigger than it already was. Also, fun fact, when Phidias finished his sculpture, he prayed to Zeus to ask if he liked it and Zeus responded by striking a part of the floor with lightning. According to Pausanias, there was a bronze jar that stood over the spot to cover where Zeus threw down his lightning bolt of approval, just to cover up the cracks in the floor. Although why you would want to cover up approval from Zeus at his own temple, I'm not entirely sure. So that's a wonderful description of the statue of Zeus. But as you can see, I have about three blocks to play with, and that's not a whole lot, right? Um, yeah, and and the only gold block that we have in Minecraft is a block of gold. And the only yellow blocks we have in Minecraft, in vanilla at least, are yellow stained glass and solid blocks of yellow things. So there's, um, yeah, there's there's just no way that I can I can build a statue to Zeus with vanilla Minecraft blocks. So, um, yeah. So instead, I've, I've, I've just left it uh, empty out of out of respect for Zeus because nothing I come up with for this is gonna look remotely good. So, uh, what a uh, what 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 do you think, Zeus? Do, do is is that okay? Is that okay? Right, great. I'm just gonna just gonna. That's great. Thank you for the lightning bolt of approval. I'm just I'm just gonna um I'm just gonna put a pot over here. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. So we didn't get the statue to Zeus, but we do have the lightning bolt of approval. We've got the pot over the crack marks in the floor for the lightning bolt of approval. It's all good. And there you have it. The Temple of Zeus at Olympia, recreated as it looks today as an archaeological site and also recreated as it may have looked in the past. I'd love to see any of your own versions of the Temple of Zeus. And if you have an idea for another site I should try to build in Minecraft, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And just before I end this episode, I also wanted to let you know that I've started a Patreon for anyone who would like to support the channel. Patreon supporters gain access to schematics of my Minecraft archaeology builds so you can use them or build them in your own worlds. I'm also planning some Patreon-only live streams, monthly Q&As, and other perks like getting a monthly site report of one of the sites I cover that month. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check out the perks over on my Patreon page using the link in the description down below. That's all for me today. Thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye! Thank you.